Hi and welcome to a screencast about uh, preparing uh, sample files for usage in Grand Org. Uh, this will be part of a future series about uh, sample set creation. But this particular screencast was triggered by a mail I got from Haikip also, uh, where he had found recorded samples um, for some instruments, among them a uh, Silberman organ uh, that Actually, the files are distributed under a Creative Commons by Sharon Like license, so it's quite uh, accessible and usable. But the samples themselves, when you download uh, them, they will come in a zipped archive. When you es extract them, um, you will find the samples. Um, here, uh, like this. And at least for a uh, loop additioner, there are some characters in, in the file folders uh, that um, messes things up. So I have renamed uh, this in this uh, manner instead. And then if we inspect uh, the files, we can see that they ha have um, a naming that would make it pretty difficult to, to order these in, in um, GeoODF uh, later. Uh, we can see that there is a MIDI number in here. Uh, and it's displaced so that 37 is actually uh, the C that should be 36. But this doesn't matter really that much. But the naming uh, should be changed. And you can do it in uh, any way you like, really. Uh, I will do use the... Ubuntu features uh, um, to remove the parts that I don't want to have and I do it again and remove the zero dash actually underscore uh, zero dash 127 like this and now I have them ordered in a simple way to to match them to the keys even though they have the wrong number it doesn't matter that much if we use flexible pipe loading later so what I noticed about uh, these files, um, they have no loop markers and no cue markers in them. Uh, no pitch info other than uh, from the name, which uh, hints that this organ is um, in a higher pitch than normal um, reference tone. So it's uh, approximately a half tone higher this is common for historical instruments and we can have a look uh, i found some images um, this is how the keyboard looks like so it has 49 keys except c sharp um, so it it will be 48 instead anyway uh, the samples do have a little bit too much noise in them, uh, so they are not really, really suitable uh, for a digital instrument. But 
since it's a historic instrument and the, the recordings are quite good anyway, I think this could be interesting nevertheless. So let's dive into it. You will need to use a loop additioner. That is a program I have written, or you don't need to use it. You can use another, but this will make it quite simple and it's free, so why not? Uh, so Loop Auditioner uh, has a feature that is um, allows for batch processing. And first of all, I will just check the outer loop search uh, parameters. So I will set it to auto search the sustain section and this is quite okay. So we leave it at that. So this is what we will do now. I will go to the folder. Uh, actually it was set already but I would um, go into this folder and I would start processing them in this order. First add pitch info uh, and this is only course working so far so uh, we run the batch and it will try to auto detect what pitch is played in these files and it takes a little while but nothing compared to what comes later so that is done so now we move on to auto add release queue. This will be need to be changed later, most likely in some cases, uh, but it works as a shortcut. So we do that. And uh, it's pretty quick anyway to get a rough. But the next step will take uh, quite lot of time so I will likely pause this video and then continue when it's done so I will auto search for loops and we start it like this and then it will work um, even though it seems to be yeah it takes some time to do this so I will pause this video now and come back when it's done see you later okay so then we are back and we have are finished with uh, this course um, first setting of um, the loops and cues and pitch info. So what I would do next is to manually inspect each of these files and make adjustments where necessary. You can see for instance here that the release marker is just a bit uh, too late. So it should be there approximately instead. I would listen to each of these loops and discard uh, those who are not good. and only keep the good ones. But I won't do all this work uh, right now because it takes quite a lot of time and uh, it's not that interesting to, to watch really. So I just save um, this file that I modified and have a quick look at the pitch uh, progression to see if I find immediately something that is off. Now it seems to be pretty okay to me. So we will uh, just leave this at, uh, at this point and, and move on to put these together in a Orion file. So then I will use GeoODF for that and I set the location of the organ 
uh, we had it digital organology here so we put it here and um, I just put something here it doesn't matter really now it's only for uh, demonstration purposes anyway so first of all uh, we add a wind chest and uh, next we create a manual and we should have 49 keys instead uh, like that and um, yeah all the other things are okay so we'll add a new stop and it's a principle and it's a four foot I will add it as an internal rank, put it on the wind chest, say 49 pipes. And uh, we should have 16 here uh, to make it 4 foot. Uh, do not use this button uh, for normal pipes that are not repeating or a combination uh, of many ranks. Uh, like a mixture or something that breaks back for that this button is useful otherwise uh, just enter the number manually here for the whole rank when there are no changes uh, so we will use the flexible pipe loading uh, I select the first pipe it's not really necessary but I do it anyway and I will match that to 37 uh, and I need to select uh, the right, of course. Folder or directory like that. So I will uh, load as many as I can and we will have the release in the attacks. Yes. And otherwise we can just hit like that. And we will have one dummy because that uh, pipe didn't exist. So what I will do is to, to take this pipe and I will copy it offset to the second pipe. Like so. And now we have this there with the correct offset already set. So next off, we will just, uh, for demonstration purposes, add to the main panel the manual and this uh, stop like this. And I won't do anything about it, just uh, save this by writing it out. And next, I open it in ground or And one thing um, to make things easier for oneself, one can um, set the MIDI input number for the manuals. And then if I reload this organ again, uh, it will automatically connect to that. <laughs> So there you have it, um, a working organ from uh, free samples coming from the Silverman instrument. So I say thanks to Heike also that uh, recommended this. So there you have it.
Thanks for watching. See you in future screencasts. Bye.